friend. It did seem to take its toll on Mr Pistorius. At one point, he claimed that he was suffering from fatigue. Well, let's take you to Karen. She is following the case blow by blow for us. Karen, it was another dramatic day, a relentless day of questioning. Can you take us through the most significant moments in court today? Yes, a relentless day of questioning until the lunch break, Lucy, when the court was adjourned, not just for lunch, but for the whole day and therefore the weekend to resume on Monday morning at the usual time, which means Oscar Pistorius will have to return again to face continued cross-examination from Hedy Nell, the fearsome prosecutor, uh, on another day. So he's had three days of cross-examination, the toll obviously being taken on him. And at one point, the judge even intervened herself. This is what she had to tell him. The question is, are you too tired to proceed? No, my lady. Because you, you can be at a disadvantage when you are in that box. I understand that. You understand that? Yes, my lady. Yes, it can't be fair to you. And it's not fair to this court either. I understand, my lady. Are you making these mistakes because you're too tired? I made a mistake, my lady, not because I'm tired. I'm, I made a mistake because I don't have a... Mr. Nile put to me that I... He asked me and I said that I switched the alarm off before I left my room. Yes, but then can we accept that you're not, you haven't made this mistake because you're tired? Can we accept that? I can accept that, my lady. No, can we accept that? Uh, yes, my lady. Okay. Thank you. So the proceedings continued. There was just one break for Oscar Pistorius uh, because of being overcome by emotion. Uh, the court was adjourned for a brief interlude of a few minutes. But uh, the morning's course ran pretty smoothly, but it was intense. Hedy Nell, uh, towards the latter part of the morning, really homed in on the few seconds, minutes, before Riva Steenkamp was shot dead by Oscar Pistorius, trying to work out how it could have been that Oscar Pistorius didn't see that she was no longer in the bed before he went towards the bathroom and fired four shots through the toilet door and he persisted to ask him why didn't you see her and if you did speak to her why didn't you wait for her to reply and then uh, he carried on asking Oscar Pistorius again and again if Reva Steenkamp was only three meters away from where Oscar Pistorius said he was shouting out telling her uh, to get down to call the police why did she not yell back how did he not know that she was behind the bathroom door and then I stood at the point where I'd moved back to after I'd looked in the base and I'd stood back so that just the bathroom <laughs> door was in line with the wall and I could see the window and I had my firearm still in front of me again I screamed for Eva to find police or security and then I shouted and I kept on shouting um, just a moment of your whole version Mr. Pistorius this is the most improbable. Riva at that stage is three meters away from you in a toilet. I didn't know that, my lady. I thought in? that she was in the bedroom. No, no. In fact, I'm talking about the fact. At that stage, when you shouted and screamed at Riva to phone the police, she is three meters away from you That's in a toilet. That's correct, my lady. And she never uttered a word. That's correct, my it's lady. Not pos it's not probable. She would be scared. She would shout out and talk to you. You're in the same room. The relentless questioning there from Harry Nall and Karen. A long weekend ahead for Oscar Pistorius. I imagine he will relive these moments over and over again. But what restrictions are being placed on him over the next few days? Well, it's going to be a long weekend, as you say. It's going to be a lonely weekend in one sense because he's not going to be able to consult with his legal team because he is officially, because his cross-examination has been interrupted by the weekend, he is officially under oath, under cross-examination. So therefore, just as if it was a continuous process, he's not going to get any help from his legal team, much as perhaps anyone would want to consult with one's legal team to get to coaching, practice and the rest.
request to face further cross-examination. That is it. He cannot uh, take legal advice. He has to carry on on Monday morning as normal. So it's going to be a, a difficult weekend for Oscar Pistorius. But uh, as this goes on, on and on, you can imagine the toll it takes, not just uh, on, on the defendant, but uh, Reva Steenkamp's mother. She has been in court every day this week watching the, the man who killed her daughter give evidence. And her face has remained largely impassive without expression, but she has stared absolutely unflinchingly at Oscar Pistorius throughout. There was only one point that she lowered her head, and that was when that very gruesome picture of her daughter was produced for the court. She knows that she will be back to watch this, this long and drawn-out process continue, hearing more details about the final moments of her daughter's life. So uh, as the uh, evidence continues to come, it takes its toll on, on many people involved in the process. So once again, Oscar Pistorius was turn up here at North Haoteng High Court on Monday morning, knowing Harry Nell is really getting to the nub of the matter. He's homing in more and more on the final moments of Reva Steenkamp's life, and leaving all the peripheral stuff aside. Those are the things that count. Oscar Pistorius's intentions, his intent, is what Harry Nell has to prove if, as the prosecution believe, uh, they want to com uh, convict him of premeditated murder. So it's going to be more of the same uh, starting Monday morning, usual time. Karen, you've been there following every single moment, blow by blow, as it were. But on international screens around the world, it does feel that every channel is gripped by this. You can look up at a screen, flick through the channels, everyone's following it. How is it in South Africa, though? Is this the only thing that it seems that people are talking about, this trial? Well, from here, where we are, we have people coming past all the time. Um, all different sections of society coming, putting their head around our tent, looking at the screens and asking us what we think, sharing their opinions. It seems everybody in this country is becoming an armchair lawyer. You listen to the phone-ins uh, on the radio, people phoning in, texting in, tweeting in uh, their perspective of how they feel the day's proceedings have gone, who's got the advantage, how Oscar Pistorius is performing, uh, and their, their belief and what, what version of events they they think is right. So yes, it feels like South Africa is absolutely gripped. That's not to say there aren't other very important stories going on. There's the Marikana Commission, which is still running. There are murders every day in this country that don't get le this level of courage, coverage. But everybody, it's fair to say, that comes past here that we encounter is, is fascinated by this case and continues to be. Karen, we